Okay, we back for another podcast. Uh, but first, we're going to go into prayer, and I'm going to hurt some feelings today. In the name of Christ, boy. Lord, bless me to bring the Holy Spirit. I mean, bless me to bring the word of God to people. Uh, bless me with the Holy Spirit to be able to discern and, and, and get everybody back to the word of God and, and put away foolishness that, you know, that people have been taught lies in this world and, 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 and they need somebody to teach them the truth, Lord. So bless me with that Holy Spirit to get me to uh, teach them today. And don't let me talk. Let you talk. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It has come to my attention. And this is becoming louder and louder that there are so-called woman pastors in this world. I mean, have y'all not been reading your holy word of God? I mean, you got people like Joyce Meyer. Uh, why, I mean, Joyce Meyer is one of the, I mean, she is a prosperity teacher. I mean, she looks like sin herself out there with makeup and earrings and everything that looks like the world over here trying to teach y'all. Stop it with, with this Joyce Meyer thing. Y'all ain't learning nothing. Y'all come in there and y'all leave the same. Uh, why need to bite them? I talked to her the other day telling me she want to pray for me. Don't, I don't need no woman pastor to preach for somebody out there uh, disobeying God. Don't come over here trying to pray for me. You're talking to a, a God appointed evangelist. You know, I want people to understand this, man. I work for God. I don't work for nobody else. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. We're going to go through the Holy Scriptures. And if I'm wrong, point it to me in the Holy Scriptures where I'm wrong. I ain't got, I ain't got no ego. Humble as they come. You sit in the hospital five months straight, not knowing if you're going to die or live. You're going to get humble. So God has humbled me. Before that, I wasn't humble. I ain't going to lie to y'all. But uh, I, another one, Darlene, I don't even want to say the name, and Bobby Houston, uh, these are Hillsong pastors. You know, this this uh, these, uh this big church over there in Australia, I think it is, over there got women pastors. <laughs> oh, that mercy. Paula White's another one I hear that is over there preaching the word of God in the church. Or the devil herself, Victoria Osteen. Lord have mercy as she wanted the... Uh, I mean, you want to be led astray. You listen to every word she say. It ain't going to be biblical and it, and it ain't got nothing to do with God. I'm here to tell y'all something, man. I want y'all to understand this. There is no such thing as a woman pastor, a bishop, an apostle, elder, or an evangelist in the holy word of God. Who taught y'all these lies? And why are you sitting here in a church as a grown man listening to what some woman told you? Again, I'm going to hurt some feelings today. I mean, and neither did a woman write any of the 66 books in the Holy Scriptures because it will contradict the word of God. I'm not preaching on myself. You know, if it was just me, I'd say, go ahead, preach what you got to do, woman. I, uh, I hope there's a whole bunch of women females bringing people to, to, to God. But that's not God's order. That's not what the Holy Scriptures teach. Notice these so-called women uh, preachers are out there, you know, uh, using opinions and screaming all in the mic. Yeah, come on, and get what that's your main motivation. Tone it down. Teach me the word of God. Don't sit there and tell me about your opinion on something. But God ain't never called no woman to preach the word of God. So you don't see them get the Holy Spirit to where they can it, it discern and teach people the word of God. I'm always preaching prosperity, too. I noticed that I've always, you know, because I pay attention because God shows me these things. He brings them to the brings them to me and shows me these certain things of what people are doing wrong. And it's like a whole bunch of scriptures come in my head nonstop, man. It's unbelievable. Thank glory to God. You know what I'm saying? But um, God ain't never called a woman to teach or preach to a man in a church setting. 
You see a woman preaching in church, you get up and walk out immediately. I'm going to prove all this through you to you through the Holy Scriptures. All right. So it's going to be God talking and not me talking. I'm just repeating what God is saying. So you're, you, if you angry with me, I could care less. God ain't God don't make a, a weak man. Anything that goes against the word of God is of the devil. Never forget that. Never forget that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want people to understand this, too. You're going to be mad at me because your your mom or your your sister or your grandmother is some case is a pastor over there disobeying the word of God. Listen, I love women. My mother's a woman. My niece is a woman. Uh, my aunts and, and, and grandmother's a woman. So don't put that like I, just, I, I hate women because I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I love women. Shout out to all women. But, oh, now there is a such thing as a prophetess. All right. Those are women. There's a prophet, which is a man and a prophetess, which is a woman. A prophetess, I believe Deborah and I believe it's Diane. I think I can't remember the name, but in the Holy Scriptures, where this is, people need to understand a prophetess is not somebody who goes out there and preaches the word of God to men or or or, or, or in a church setting. That's not what a, a a a prophetess is. A prophetess is somebody who foretells an event to come by God, like a a a, 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 a something that came to them uh, through a vision through the through through, through that you know in. Men and kids can do this at the same time. So it's not just a woman. All right. But God ain't never called a woman to preach or teach his word in the church. I can't stress this to you much. One, we're going to go into scriptures now. One Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not the author of confusion. This is before he even talks about the woman preaching so that there is no confusion in his word so that you understand this is God talking. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Verse 34, let your women keep silence in the churches. That should put away anything. Anybody ever a woman preaching in church? Uh, that should just tell you there's no such thing as a pastor, woman, a woman pastor. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. God doesn't even want you to speak in church as a woman. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also say the law. Now, when he's saying speak, he's talking about preaching his word. A woman can sing in church. A woman can uh, 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 foretell an event to come, uh, but never to command to teach men how to uh, teach men or women how to uh, 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 the word of God. That's just not what God called a woman to do. In verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. See, he, he won't even allow you to discuss the word of God in this church. If you ask anything, ask their husbands at home for it, it, it. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. This is God talking. Let's repeat this verse. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in church. Now, this is where God mocks them, mocks the woman. Preaching his word in, in church. In verse 36. He says what? Came the word of God out from you? This is what it, God is saying. Or came in it unto you only? Meaning the men would come first before it would be the, uh, somebody getting the word of God from, man, from a woman. Again let's repeat this verse. 36. This is God talking. What? Came the word of God out from you and you only? That puts away any kind of woman preaching in the church at all. 
Like I said, if you if you see a woman preaching and, and getting up in that pulpit, you get up, you immediately get up and you walk out of there and, and you because you are not going to disobey God. Again, this ain't got nothing to do with uh, 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 genders or uh, 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 I hate the woman or, or I hate the man. It's just God's order. In 1 Timothy 2, 11, uh, uh, chapter 2, and, and 11 through 14, we're going to go over this real quick. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. All subjection, meaning it, 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 it's not the man. If you're trying to go uh, over talk the man or trying to do this to the man, he said, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer, in verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not. A woman to teach God talking nor to absurd authority over the man but to be in silence verse 13 for Adam was first formed meaning God made man in his image and made him first then took the woman from the man's rib as he was sleeping uh, uh, so the man wouldn't be lonely. All right. It says first for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay. That's the order for Adam was not deceived. Meaning when he was, the, uh, he wasn't deceived when the devil came at him to try to tell him he could be God. If he could eat this fruit, it was the woman that he, that he, uh, 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 told told uh, told the woman to eat the uh, convince the woman to eat it and then bring it to Adam. So he's telling you this: for Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. <coughs> so uh, what he's telling you specifically is that he has an order to all this, and to and and, and it's the woman that led the man to sin. Not the other way around. He brought sin into the world. And God cursed her. And cursed them. Because he ate it from the fruit. Because she convinced him to eat the fruit. Let's go to Corinthians 1. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.3. Just to show you the order of God. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Every man is Jesus Christ. The head of every man is Jesus Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is. <coughs> so the head of the woman is not Christ. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now, this is in 1 Corinthians eleven three. 3. That's the verse for that. Now, going down there to verses 7. Uh, God was talking about how the woman needs to uh, uh, cover her head if she's going to pray in church. So meaning not not hair, but uh, a, a veil or a hat, because it's a shame for a woman to uh, pray with, with her hair un uncovered. So so we go to verse seven. So you kind of understand what I'm going to go where I'm going through, because I passed through from verse three to seven for a man indeed ought to not cover his head for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. So the, the woman is not the glory of Christ. The woman is the glory of the man. For the man, in verse 8, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Remember in Genesis 1, we took the rib out again. Neither, in verse 9, neither was the man created for the woman. So that we weren't even uh, men weren't even created for the woman. It was the other way around. But the woman. But the woman for the man. So in verse nine, neither was the man created of the woman, but the woman for the man. Genesis one for, for all of y'all are looking for that chapter one. Um, and now we're going to go into another verse in, in one Timothy three, one through twelve. And this is talking about if a man wants to desire to be a pastor or a bishop. This is what he's telling you what it is. It says in verse uh, 1 Timothy 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. If 
a man, not a woman, desire the office of a bishop, he, not she, he desire a good work. Verse two, a bishop, they must, see, this is where God's going in verse two. He's talking about the rules to being a pastor as a man. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, not 10 wives, one wife, vigilant, sober, meaning you can't be out there drinking and, and, and drugging and of good behavior, meaning you can't be out there uh, uh, acting up like a fool, being called a pastor because you represent Christ, <coughs> given the hospitality. Meaning a uh, given, a uh, 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 given to hospitality. Uh, meaning you, 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 uh, uh, you always giving, or you, you, you're always uh, uh, helping someone. Um, and a point to teach. Not given to wine. Verse three, no striker. Meaning you can't be out there fighting, brawling, nor greedy. You can't be a pastor and be greedy or filthy lucre. Uh, a pastor must be patient, but patient, not a brawler, not a covetous. And verse four, one that rule well his own house. I mean, he got to rule his house, meaning he got to be the ruler of the house. You can't have the woman being the ruler. You can't have the children ruling him. He's got to be the ruler of his house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Now, verse five, for if a man, not a woman again, not a she, not a, you know, for if a man not know how to rule his own house, and this is a question God has given you, but if a man not know how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of God? You got some of these pastors, these men pastors out here, they got their woman in church sitting there uh, preaching the word with them. They ain't better than no other woman. Who told y'all that? Because they're their wife, so you should uh, you should respect them as some kind of pastors. Uh, 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 the other uh, why why ain't no first lady in, in the word of God. <coughs> you know, different than the than the, the pastor's wife. They just need to stop putting these the 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 wives up there. Like you know what I'm saying? That's that goes against the word of God. Now, this is what God calls the woman to teach, who to teach, and, and who should be teaching. Titus 2, 3, 5. This is the only part where it shows you where God allows the woman to teach. It says in verse 3, the aged woman. So it's got to be an a older woman. Uh, uh, older woman. The aged women, likewise, that they be in a behavior as becoming uh, becometh holiness, not false accusers. I mean, you can't be out there gossiping and lying about somebody else, not giving them much wine. Can't be out there drunk. Teachers of good things. What are good things? Preaching the word of God. I mean, uh, 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 teaching the young women about the word of God. Uh, showing them where it says to be in modest apparel, to to uh, to not adorn himself in uh, 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 gold and costly array on their face. And, and, you know, it's just, you know, out there uh, uh, dressing half naked. You know, that's some that teaches a good thing that they may teach the young women to be sober. Teaching them how not to be drunk all the time, not to be high all the time on drugs, popping pills. <laughs> but to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, meaning at home, discreet, uh, not out there uh, uh, gossiping with other women and gossiping with other men, because that's when the problems come in your house. When you start listening to somebody on the outside telling you you ain't got a good enough man or, or you know what I'm saying? And you start listening, go through your mind and then the devil working. I remember one verse that says in Proverbs 24, 9, for the thought of foolishness is sin. Chastise. Keepers at home. Keepers at, I can't stress that to you enough. Keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, again, I'm going to offend a lot of people 
but like I told you, I really don't care. I'd rather see y'all souls in heaven and y'all learn the truth than for me to be sitting here lying to you about, oh yeah, there's such thing as women pastors. There's not. These people are lying to you. They are bold. Bring these verses up. I brought you to them. Show them. Say, well, that's not what the word of God said. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 34. It says, let the women keep silence in the churches. <coughs> My brothers and sisters. The devil is a master manipulator. He convinced one third of the angels that he was going to take over heaven. Think about that. Think about that. If he can convince one third of the angels and we're humans, you know, we're subject to all kinds of uh, uh, non-perfection. We make all kinds of mistakes. The devil is working hard through those women preachers and they want to take your souls to hell. There's no word of God coming out of them. I'm telling y'all as a brother who knows everyone, every, knows the, the, the Holy Scriptures like the back of my hand. I live in this thing like a bird in the nest. I want to learn every day. Every other day I'm in these scriptures trying to learn something new. And if I don't know something, I'm going to ask my pastor or somebody else that's going to help me to understand this. But again, God gave me the gave me the ability to discern the holy scriptures. May God bless all y'all and walk out of these women pastor ch uh, ch churches. God bless.